Welcome to the Sports Science Hub's guide to everything you need to know about the fundamentals of groups and leadership. We will help you understand how groups form, what affects group cohesion, and what makes an effective leader. Let's get started. Groups are two or more people that interact and influence each other. A group will commonly have a collective identity, a shared purpose or goals, mutual awareness, and structured communications, such as a home crowd or a sports team. Tuckman's model suggests that there are four stages to the formation of groups. Forming, in which members get to know each other and develop roles. Storming, is where conflict between members occur and individuals try to establish their positions. It is important that the coach drives the group through this stage. Norming, reflects the stage where cooperation replaces conflict and members agree on how to work together. And performing, in which there is total acceptance of roles and all members work towards the common goals as a well-functioning group. There is sometimes a fifth stage, mourning, which is when a group breaks up and goes their separate ways. Group cohesion is a dynamic process which is reflected in the tendency for a group to stick together and remain united in pursuing their goals and objectives. Task cohesion is the willingness of the team to work together to achieve their common goals. And social cohesion is the willingness of a team to interact with and socialise with each other. Karen's model explains four factors that affect the development of cohesion. Environmental factors, which bind members together, such as contracts, age or nationality. Personal factors, which bind members together through collective motives and values. Leadership factors, which are about the behaviour of leaders and coaches. And team factors, relating to the group, such as identity or member ability. Steiner's model suggests that team success equals potential for success minus coordination and motivational problems. Potential for success suggests that the members with the highest ability make the best team and individual success usually means team success. Coordination problems occur when there is a high level of interaction between players, but one or more members are too selfish or aggressive and the overall team performance suffers. Motivation problems occur when one or more members work less than the rest of the group, such as in a scrum or in a rowing team. There are also some negative effects born from group dynamics. The Ringelman effect occurs when an individual's performance decreases as the group size increases. Social loafing occurs when an individual attempts to hide in a group situation and reduces their effort when working with others. Leadership is the behaviour of an individual when they are directing or influencing the activities of others towards a shared goal. Selection of leaders can be one of two ways. Prescribed leaders are appointed by someone in authority and imposed onto a group. They are likely to be highly qualified, skilled and motivated, but may be unfamiliar with the team and be under severe pressure to perform. Emergent leaders emerges from within a group and takes charge with the support from their teammates. They achieve their status through respect, familiarity and recognisable leadership skills. However, they may lack experience and cause resentment from within the group. There are three main leadership styles. Authoritarian or autocratic leaders dictate to the group and do not ask for advice. When the leader is absent, the group can slow or stop. These type of leaders are most effective when there are many performers and when decisions need to be made quickly towards the clear goal. Democratic leaders 
listens to the advice of others and encourages group discussions. This is an informal and relaxed approach. When the leader is absent, the group will continue to work. These types of leaders are most effective in individual sports and when the performer is experienced and when decisions do not have to be made quickly. And a laissez-faire leader adopts a passive role and leaves the group to look after themselves. Members of the group may become aggressive towards each other when things go wrong. There are a number of theories regarding leadership. Great man theory is a nature theory that suggests that great leaders are born with all the required personality qualities and are not made. Social learning theory is the nurture theory which suggests that leaders learn their skills through learning behavioural patterns from environmental influences and observing others who are good leaders and copy their behaviour. Chelanduri suggests that the effectiveness of leadership depends on three factors. The situation, such as time, tradition and size of the group. Leader characteristics, such as personality, leadership style and experience and member characteristics such as motivation, age and expectations. Once these factors have been assessed, the next stage can be considered in achieving performance satisfaction. Required behaviour is what is expected of a coach by team management. Actual behaviour is the way in which the coach normally goes about his job. And preferred behaviour is the way in which members prefer their coach to relate to them. The consequences of these factors will determine performance and satisfaction. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then please help others find our videos and hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel now. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget you can also visit our website www.sportsciencehub.com for more videos on everything you need to know about sports science. See you soon.